Cause I know why the heathen rage Cause the guys be bringing it out we bringing This it kingdom out. we bringing it down yeah. Lost sheep we'd have been found yeah. Wait until we get a crown Crown talk yeah. Just that crown talk yeah. Nehemiah don't want be like Nino Brown now yeah. Cause this that king talk Who? Real life king talk Who? Like Solomon I see things clearly like a greenhouse The wordplay can't get colorful The scriptures cutting you the butter too Not to mention we a living legend Don't know what to do when a myth is standing right in front of you You better watch and just take notes The father sent the flood then a rainbow But his son coming back with fire So it ain't gonna be no more scapegoats Let me tell you what the prophecy Unparalleled with the prophecies Stopping Fritz, bodies in the street My people property in this monopoly Call it America, where the dreams come true when nightmares and the demons come to the side of my agenda, I don't give a damn if you offended. Cause this All praises. Uh, so, do you know why we went through that condition? Why did we have to go through slavery? Hey, bro, can I get your name real quick? What's your name? Mars. What'd you say? Mars. 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 I can't hear you with the mask. Alright, so <laughs> give me Deuteronomy 28 and 15. Yeah. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. But it shall come to pass if thou would not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So God talking to Israel right now. He's telling us that if we don't listen to what he tells us to do, keep reading. To observe to do all his commandments. So we don't deserve to do all of his commandments. Uh do you know some of God's commandments? You don't? Okay, let's say like, uh, tonight gonna be the new moon, right? So we're supposed to observe the new moon. We're gonna go over that and show you how to keep that. Uh, keep reading. To observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So by us not applying God's commandments, by us not doing God's commandment, he said a curse was gonna be upon us. Right. A curse was gonna be upon his people. So, uh, give me about, give me the one with the pestilence. Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 61. I saw every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law. So, let me ask you this. Is, can you find Corona, the coronavirus in the Bible? Okay, right? So, read that again. Verse 61. Also, every sickness and every plague which is written, which is not written in the book of this law. So the coronavirus is a plague, right? But you can't find it in the Bible. So that's a prophecy that came true, right? Because it's affecting our people now, right? Can you read it? Them will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. So God said he's going to put those pestilence on us until we be destroyed, right? right? So that's why some of our people are dying from it now. That's why we are getting sick. That's why our people are afraid. Give me uh, Leviticus 26 and verse, start verse 14. Bring it out. Because it's a reason why God is doing this to us. It's a reason why, because we didn't want to keep his commandments, right? Bring it out. Leviticus chapter 26 and verse 14. But if ye will not hearken unto me, and will not do all these commandments. So we don't do God's commandments, read. And if ye shall despise my statutes. So we hated keeping God's commandments. We hated keeping his Sabbath. We hated keeping his new moons. We hate keeping the dietary law. Let's find out what happened, read. Or if your soul abhor my judgment, so that ye will not do all my commandments, but that ye break my covenant, okay, I also will do this unto you. Let's find out what God's going to do to his people if we don't keep his commandments, read. I will even appoint over you terror. So God said he's going to point terrors over us. Our people are afraid now of the coronavirus. Right. That's why our people are wearing masks. That's why our people are going to the extreme to try to prevent themselves from getting sick because now they're going through that terror that God said he's going to put on us. Right. Because we didn't want to keep his commandments. Go back to uh, Deuteronomy 28. And, uh, did you finish uh, 61 out? Because it's a reason, that's the reason why our people are so afraid, because God said, okay, you don't want to bind up all the uh, tissue and resources and all that, right. because we didn't want to keep God's commandments. 
Oh, and terrorism also means like uh, like terrorism, right? Like the brother he had got shot in Georgia because uh, because our people ain't uh, applying God's commandment, so God killing our people. Well, right. actually, give me uh Deuteronomy 32 and verse uh 39 or uh, 29, 29, 39, 39, because God said uh like the reason why our people are dying from it is because God he he's not playing with us. He not he not taking us. He not uh. Taking us breaking his commandments lightly. Right. right. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 29. 39. I mean chapter 32 and verse 39. See now that I, even I, am he. So God said, it's me. I'm the only one. Read. And there is no God with me. There ain't no other God with God. God is the only true God. Read. I kill. Wait a minute. God do what? I Kill. So God is the one that's killing our people off. God is the one that said, okay, you don't want to keep my commandments? I'm going to put these pestilence on y'all. I have to kill y'all at an alarming rate. Read. And I make a lie. And God said he's the one that makes a lie. The reason why, if you don't get sick, is because God is allowing you not to get sick. If you die, God wants you to die because you're not keeping his commandments. Is that, that it on it? I wound. And. I heal. So if you get healed or if you get hurt, that's of the Lord. God is the one that's in control of all it. Give me uh first Samuel two and you want me to finish the rest of that now? It's more on that? Yeah. Yeah, you can finish. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hands. So nobody nobody can save you but God. God is the only one that's gonna uh prevent. Like if you want this pestilence to stop, you want this coronavirus to end, it's gonna be of God, not of man. God is the one that's in control of all that. Give me uh first Samuel two and uh I think it was verse six or is it verse nine? Because God is the one, he's the one that's in control verse of six. uh all that. Read. First Samuel chapter two and verse six. The Lord killeth and maketh alive. So God is the one that's killing out all our people. Right. God is the one that's putting the disease on us. Keep reading. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. So God is the only one that could deliver us out of this condition. Right. Ain't no mask gonna uh, uh, save you. Ain't no medication from the uh, the so-called white man gonna save you. It's God. God is the one that's gonna heal you. God is the one that's gonna cure you from those diseases. Go uh, go back to Deuteronomy 28 and 15. So, bro, why are we the one? Why, why are we getting uh, afflicted right now? Why are we going through the conditions we're going through? Because the reason why is because we're not keeping God's commandments. Right. So. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna give you a commandment. Go to uh, go to Exodus 20 and verse 8. Because tomorrow, well, tonight is fit to become a Sabbath. That's one of God's commandments. You heard of the uh, the Big Ten, the Big Ten commandments? Yeah, the Big Ten, like thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not have other gods, uh, thou shalt uh, keep the Sabbath day. We're gonna go over the Sabbath day for you. Read Exodus chapter 20 and verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day. So God told his people to remember the Sabbath day. So do you know what the Sabbath day is? All right, read. To keep it holy. To keep it holy. Keep reading. Six days shall thy labor and do all thy work. So God said that we had six days to do all of our work, right? So we had six days to work. We had six days to labor. Read. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. So the Sabbath day is the seventh day of the Lord thy God, right? So that's why uh, we're supposed to be rested on the Sabbath. But Christian churches, they tell you what, the Sabbath day is on Sunday. But if you look at your calendar, the Sabbath day is actually on the Sabbath, on, on Saturday, read. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant. So, God said that you're not supposed to do any work. That goes for your family, your kids, your employees. They are not supposed to work on the Sabbath day. So, give me uh, Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter 10, verse 31. Bring it up. Because our people, we, we want to honor God, but we don't know how to honor God properly. The way you honor God is by keeping his commandments. So, one of, the one way we keep it is by keeping the Sabbath day. Nehemiah chapter 10, verse 31. Nehemiah chapter 10 and verse 31. And if the people of the land bring wear or any victuals. So do you know what wear or victuals are? Wear or victuals goes into uh, food and clothing. So if you bring merchandise to sell, read. On the Sabbath day, 
to sell that we would not buy it of them on the Sabbath. So the Israelite custom was for us not to buy and to sell on the Sabbath day, right? So when the Sabbath come, which we having a Sabbath tonight and we have a Sabbath on Saturday, the reason why tonight gonna be a Sabbath is because it's the new moon. It's a feast day that the, that the Lord had, uh, give, gave to the children of Israel. Give me uh, Leviticus 23 and uh, start at verse two. Because it's a it's a feast day for us to keep. That's a day. That's a Sabbath of rest. Because when you uh are supposed to come around your people, you're supposed to be gathered together. You're supposed to be rejoicing in God's commandments. Read Leviticus chapter twenty three and verse two. Speak unto the children of Israel. So God is talking to you. He says, speak unto the children of Israel. Read and say unto them concerning the feast of the Lord. So this is concerning the feast of the Lord. The new moon is a feast of the Lord. Read. Right. Which ye shall proclaim to be a holy convocation. So it's, all, it's supposed to be a holy gathering. It's a time where we're supposed to come together. Of course, right now we can't do that because we have to abide by the laws of the land. But you can uh, still keep the, the new moon. Read. Even these are my feast. Six days shall work be done. Wait a minute. So the new moon is a feast of the Lord, right? And he still have the same requirements, read. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. So the new moon is a Sabbath, so it's a day of rest. And we're going to prove that. Uh, give me uh, Psalms, I think it's 81 and verse 3. Talk about the blowing of the trumpet. Bring because, it out, huh? Because that's, that's the new moon is a, 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 a actual Sabbath. And the way we know that it's a new moon is when we see the full moon in the sky. Read. We're going to read it for you. Psalms chapter 81 in verse 3. Blow up the trumpet in the new moon. So we blow up our trumpets in the new moons. We have like chauffeurs and stuff like that. We blow those up on the new moons. Can you read? In the time appointed on our solemn feast day. So the new moon is a solemn feast day. It's a day ordained by God. Read. For this was a statute for Israel. So it was a statute. A statute is a commandment. So it's a commandment that God gave the children of Israel to keep. Read. And a law of the God of Jacob. So it's a law of the God of Jacob. That's our commandment. That's, that's a commandment God gave us to keep. That's a Sabbath day that we must keep. And I'm going to give you another commandment. Uh, give me 1 Corinthians 11. That's right. Because yeah. we got to start applying God's commandments. You want... You don't want to get you don't want to catch the corona, do you? So you gotta apply God's commandments, right? God said He's the one that's gonna kill, He's the one that's gonna heal. If you apply God's commandments, you don't have to worry about the corona. You don't see none of us, you don't see none of us worried about the corona, do we? It's only the people that are not keeping God's commandments, right? That's right, bring it out. First Corinthians chapter eleven and verse three. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So who's the head of man? Christ, right? Read. And the head of the woman is the man. And who's the head of the woman? Read again. And the head of the man, I mean, and the head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. So who's the head of the woman? The man. Read. And the head of Christ is God. So the head of Christ is God. Can you read it? Every man praying or prophesying. So we out here right now, we out here praying and prophesying, right? We out here prophesying, giving you uh, the laws and the commandments and the conditions and tell you about the judgments that are falling upon our people. Those are prophecies. Read. Having his head covered dishonoreth his head. So if a man have his head covered while the scriptures are coming out, he dishonoreth his head. Who is your head? Read, read it from the top. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So who's the head of man? Christ, Christ right? Yeah. So if you got your head covered, who are you dishonoring? Christ, right? So if you want to, that's a commandment that God gave us, right? So if you want to keep that commandment, if you don't want to get sick and catch the corona, what you got to do? Bring it out. got to take that hat off. Right. got to take the hat off because you by you doing that, you're applying God's commandments. If you don't do it, then you are breaking God's commandments. Take his head off while you listen to the word. Yeah, take you gotta take your hat off while you are listening to the word. While the word is coming out, that's when you gotta take the hat off, your hat off. Or when you're reading or when you're hearing prophecy from, uh, coming out. That's when you take your hat off. 
Read again for him. Read uh, verse 4. Verse 4. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. So when you're hearing the word come out and you have your head still covered, you are dishonoring your head. I got to take my prayer off. Yeah, take your hat off while the word is coming out, right? All right, you go. Uh, go back to Deuteronomy 28. Boom, there you go. I'll praise this. Okay. There you go. I'll praise So, that right there, that, that's a simple commandment. Give me uh, 1 John chapter 5 and uh, verse 3. Because what you did right now, you just showed love to Christ. You showed love to God by you applying God's commandments. That's, uh, that's an easy thing for you to do. Read. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 3. For this is the love of God. So this is the love of God. This is how you love God. Read. Yeah. That we keep his commandments. By you keeping his commandments. By you applying God's commandments. That's how you show love to God. Because you can't physically go up there and, uh, to God and say, God, I love you. You only, got, you only can do it by the actions that you uh, that you commit. That's how you love God. Uh, give me that in 1 Samuel. Where it say that uh, the actions are way. 1 Samuel 2. And 3. Because the actions that you commit, God honors that. He honors when you keep his commandments. He honors when you apply his commandments. He loves to see you keeping his commandments. Read. I took my head off. 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 3. Talk no more exceeding proudly. So God said he don't want to hear us talking proud. He don't want to hear us uh, boasting ourselves. Read. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. So God, he don't want to hear arrogance coming out of our mouths. Read. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. So God, he judges you by your actions. He right. judges you by what type of uh, a person you're trying to be uh, according to, by his, through his commandments. When you keep his commandments, he honors you. He, uh, he, uh, he, he raises you up. He esteems you more than if you will break his commandments. All right, so uh, let's get another commandment. Go to Numbers chapter 15, verse 38. Because we still got to keep God's commandments while we are going through uh, all these crises, while we still going through all these afflictions. Read. Numbers chapter 15 and verse 38. Speak unto the children of Israel. So God is talking to the children of Israel. He says, he told Moses to speak to the children of Israel. Read. And bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. So God said, Moses, bid the children of Israel, command the children of Israel to put fringes in the borders of their garment. Right. You know what fringes are? Fringes are like what we what you see on our shirts right here. That uh like that brother right there got like he got like I got on. These are fringes. Keep reading. Throughout their generations. Throughout our generations. So as long as we still having children, as long as we still on the earth, we gotta keep that commandment. Right. Keep reading. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders. A ribbon of blue. So when we put our, our fringes on our uh, on our clothing, we have to put a border of blue, a ribbon of blue on top of the fringe. Like you see like that bro right there, he got, yeah, like a blue, any color blue. As long as it's blue, you got to put that on top of your fringe. Well, yeah, yeah as long as it's blue. Keep right. reading. And it shall be unto you for a fringe that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of so, the Lord. So the fringes are supposed to be a reminder for you. It's supposed to help you remember God's commandments. Because our people, we are quick to forget God's commandments. It's easy for us to fall off. It's easy for us to uh, to forget the forget how to uh, apply God's commandments. Read. And remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them that ye seek not after your own heart and your own eyes after which you use to go a whoring. Because it's easy for our people to follow. That's why God, he made, uh, uh, he used the fringes as basically like, uh, as a buffer so that we can, uh, so we can uh, remember his commandments and stay focused on keeping his commandments. That's what the fringes, is. that's the purpose of that fringe law. All right, give me uh, Leviticus 21 and verse five. I, I, can't, I can't really see if you got a, a beard or not, but that's a commandment also that God gave us. He gave us, you shave, you're not supposed to shave. That's uh, breaking the commandments. The reason why is because the judgment for shaving is what you get hair bumps, your skin get irritated. Those are things that are, uh, that's why that's one of the judgments for uh, shaving your beard. And, yeah, you gotta grow a beard because 
I you. You, you, uh, you familiar with Genesis? God said he made us in his image. So okay. God has a beard, so we got to have a beard. So read. I got to so hey. grow a beard. Leviticus. Hey, you got to grow a beard. Read. Leviticus chapter 21 and verse 5. They shall not make baldness upon their head. See right there what the scripture said. He said, thou shalt not make baldness upon their head. Read. Neither shall they shave off the corners of their beard. So God said we're not supposed to shave off the corners of our beard. Because the beard is a, a, a symbol of manly dignity. Right. That's how you separate yourself from uh, a man from a boy. Because when you have a beard, you can easily identify that. Like right. say, for example, uh, the animal kingdom, right? When a lion, how do you know a male lion from a female lion? Bring it out. Bring it out. By the mane, right? The, the male lion has a mane. When it's fully grown, it grows a mane. And a female lion, she don't have nothing. So that's how you identify the male from the female. That's how a uh, guy has separated us from the, uh, to identify us as a, uh, as a manly dignity. The beard is a manly dignity. Yeah. All right, uh, let's see. Bring it out, I need on it. This is morning. Nor make any cuttings in their flesh. So we're not supposed to get tattoos. We're not supposed to uh, get tattoos because God said that that's a, uh, that's a custom of the Egyptians. That's something that the Egyptians did. Right. God don't want us to uh, damage our body. How y'all doing, sis? All right. Do y'all know y'all know y'all nationality? Y'all know who y'all are? What's y'all what's y'all uh, nationality? Y'all caught y'all claim yourselves to be uh, American blacks. What about you, bro? You claim yourself to be an American black? But God said that y'all are Israelites. Y'all God's chosen people. Give me, uh, what'd you say? <laughs> I'll praise you. Give me uh, Deuteronomy uh, 7 and 6. Because God, he put us above all other nations. That's why we are better. That's why we are stronger. That's why we are smarter. God made his people to be special and above all other people. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the, unto the Lord thy God. So the word holy means separate. God said you are a separate people. Read. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people. So, unto God, so God chose the Israelites, the blacks, Hispanics, the Native Americans, to be a special people unto who? Unto himself. Unto himself. Okay, read. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So God said we are supposed to be above all people on the face of the earth. Are we living like we above all people on the face of the earth? Are we living like we above all people on the face of the earth? We're not, right? We are living in the ghettos. We are the ones that are living in poverty. We are the ones that are struggling. We are the ones that got a, uh, the paycheck to paycheck. We are the ones that have to uh, struggle to make uh, ends meet. We are the ones struggling. Why are we in that condition? Why are we the ones struggling? You know why we struggling? Do you know why we struggling? Because we not keeping God's commandments. That's right. Go back to Deuteronomy 28, 15. Because once we all uh, fell away from God's commandments, God said, okay, I'm not, I'm fit to punish them. Like say for instance, if you have a child, right? And your child does not listen to you or obey what you tell them to do. And then that child come back to you later and ask you, can they have something? Will you give that child that what it wants? Or would you punish that child because it didn't listen to you? You're going to punish them, right? Because they did not obey what you told them to do. Why would you reward your child for being disobedient? Read. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. But it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. The word hearken means to listen. So God said we did not listen to him. Read. To observe to do all his commandments. So we didn't obey what God commanded us to do. Read. And his statutes which I command thee this day that all these curses so let me ask y'all this is a curse a good thing or a bad thing it's a bad thing right can you read it all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee so god says since you don't want to listen to me i'm gonna put curses on you right i'm gonna make these curses are going to be on you until it overtakes you until it's like evidence to where you know dang why why are we cursed give me that uh verse 47 Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 47. 46. 46. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder. So that thee is talking about is the curses. It said the curses are going to be upon the Israelites for a sign and for a wonder. Read. And upon thy seed 
forever. So it's gonna be upon our seed forever. A sign is to identify something, right? Right. When you uh let's say like you looking for the McDonald's sign, but you don't know where it's at, so you gotta look up at the sign, you notice that big golden arc. That's how you know that where a McDonald's is located. So a sign is to identify something. Read it again. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. So the curses are going to be upon our seed forever until we start keeping God's commandments. So jump down to verse 48. Verse 48. Therefore shall thou serve thy enemies which the Lord shall send against thee. So God says since we didn't want to keep his commandments, now we have to serve our enemies. So what uh, race of people, a group of people, serves another nation we do we don't we don't we don't own our own land we don't own our own businesses we don't own our own economy we have to use the con the um the currency of this land we don't use our own currency so now we're serving another nation read and hunger and hunger so if you want to buy food if you want to get anything from uh to feed yourself you have to go to your enemies now so because we don't we don't produce our own product we don't produce our own uh cattle we don't produce our own uh vegetation we have to go to these uh stores like walmart sam's clubs uh targets uh kroger's those are owned by the other nations those are owned by the so-called white man right those are not owned by our own people keep reading and in thirst and in thirst you have to go to your oppressor your enemy for water now if you want to keep your water on in your house you have to pay that water bill, right? right. What happens if you don't pay your water bill? They're going to cut it off. They go, uh, they can easily control uh, your living conditions because we didn't want to uh, keep God's commandments. Keep reading. And in nakedness. And in nakedness. Do we make our own clothing? We don't, right? We don't make our own clothes. If you look at the back of uh, the tag of your shirt, it said made from China. Made from Taiwan, right. made from all these other nations, but the black man. Bring it out. Read. And in want of all things. So if you want anything, so like say for instance, uh, our people were going crazy over the mask. Where do you have to go to get your mask from now? You gotta go to your oppressor, right? We're not producing our own mask. We're not producing our own medication. Right. You have to go to your enemy just to uh, get vaccinated. The, uh, you have to go to your enemy just for anything you want. You have to go to your enemy now. You have to go to your enemy for your housing. You have to go to your enemy for your paycheck. You have to go to your enemy for your car. You have to go to your enemy for, your, for gas to put into your car. You have to go to your enemy for all things. Keep reading. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. So this particular guy is being very particular now with this particular enemy. He said this enemy going to put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. What race of people put a yoke of iron upon the black man's neck? What race of people put a yoke of iron upon the black man's neck? The so-called white man. He put a yoke of iron upon our neck. Like for, uh, yeah, right there. That's a yoke of iron. That chain that uh, they show on the slave movies, the ones that they show, they proudly put on TV, those are the yokes of iron that uh, God's talking about they put on our necks. It's right there. So like when the slaves try to run away, they usually have, some of them have bells on it. Some of them have like, they stick out very far. So when the slaves try to run through the woods, they'll get hanged up or they'll know the location when the bells ring. They know when the slave runs. All right, uh, that's it on that. Go to uh, verse, give me verse uh, 68. Want me to finish that out? Yeah, finish that out. Until he have destroyed thee. Until, he, until we are destroyed. So God said that that, yeah, yoke of iron, the enemy gonna put a yoke of iron on there until we are destroyed. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.